Hi, I'm Eric. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to list all the possible outcomes of a probability event by drawing a tree diagram. Welcome to E.J. Fullerton, where class is always in session. For our first example, let's create a tree diagram to list all the possible outcomes of rolling a six-sided die and tossing a coin. If we roll the die, we will get outcomes of either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And if we toss the coin, we will get an outcome of either heads or tails. Knowing that information, let's draw our tree diagram. So I'm going to just list vertically the numbers 1 to 6 to represent the numbers on our die. So we could roll a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then, as we said, we could either flip heads or tails on the coin. So we could roll a 1, and we could toss and get heads. We could roll a 1, and we could get tails. We could roll a 2 and get heads, and a 2 and get tails. We could get 3 and heads, or 3 and tails. 4 and heads, 4 or tails, 5 with heads, or 5 with tails, or we could roll and get a 6 and toss to get heads, or roll a 6 and toss to get tails. So this tree diagram illustrates all the possible outcomes of rolling one six-sided die and tossing one coin. We can now list all of our outcomes. So I'm just going to title this off to the side as Outcomes. And looking at our tree diagram, I can see that once again, I could get a 1 and heads. So I'm going to write 1 H for heads, or I could get 1 and tails. So 1 and T for tails. Same with 2, 2 heads or 2 tails, 3 and heads or 3 and tails. 4 and heads and, you got it, 4 and tails, 5 and heads, 5 tails, and finally 6, and we could toss heads, or 6, and we could toss tails. Now if we were asked to find the total number of outcomes, we could count all of these possible outcomes, and we could get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we'd know that there are 12 different outcomes. Instead of counting the number of outcomes, we could also calculate the number of possible outcomes. We know that there are six possible outcomes for the die, and we know there are two possible outcomes for the coin. So if we multiply six by two, we know that that is going to equal 12, which is the total possible number of outcomes for rolling one six-sided die and tossing a coin. For a second and final example, let's list the possible outcomes of spinning a spinner with four equal sections, rolling a six-sided die, and tossing a coin. If we list the outcomes of each individual item, we could spin green, blue, yellow, or red. We could roll one, two, three, four, five, or six, and we could toss heads or tails. Our tree diagram could look like this. I'm going to list first all the possibilities of rolling the six-sided die. I'm going to list this horizontally across my page this time and really spreading them out. One, two, three, four, there we go, 
five, or six. Next, I'm going to list all the possible outcomes of spinning the spinner. So I could roll one and spin to get green. I could roll the one and spin to get blue. Roll the one and spin for yellow. And roll one and spin and land on red. I could do the same for two. I could roll a two and spin to get green. Roll a two, spin to get blue. Roll a two, spin to get yellow. And roll a two and spin to get red. I'm going to continue with this, and with the magic of the computer, I will meet you back in just a moment. There we go. I've now continued our tree diagram to show all the outcomes of rolling the die and spinning the spinner. Now I'm going to finish off our tree diagram by adding in the outcomes of tossing the coin. So we know that we can toss a coin, and we could either get heads or tails. So I could spin, or sorry, I could roll and land on one, spin and get green, and then toss and get heads or tails. Let's fix the H. There we go. I could roll one and spin and get blue, toss and get heads or tails. I could roll the die and land on one. I could spin the spinner and get yellow, and I could toss the coin and get, once again, heads or tails. And I can do the same thing for one getting red on the spinner, and landing on or tossing for heads or tails. Once again, with the magic of the computer, I'm going to complete this for 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and all our spinner outcomes, and I'll see you back in just a second. I've completed our tree diagram, so now it shows all the possibilities of rolling the die, all the possibilities of spinning the spinner, and all the possibilities of tossing the coin. What I'm going to do now, as I did with the first example, is list all of our possible outcomes. So once again, I'm just going to title this Outcomes here. So I could roll a one, get green on the spinner, and toss and get heads. So I'm going to write one G for green, H for heads, I could get a one green and tails, so one green tails. I could get a one blue heads, one spin blue and get toss for tails. I could get one spin yellow, one spin and get yellow, toss the coin and get heads. I could get one spin yellow, toss the coin and get tails. I could go one spin red and get heads, and finally, right at the bottom of the screen, one spin red and get tails. I'm gonna go ahead and continue this for two, three, four, five, and six, and once again, I'll see you back in just a second. So up to this point, I've completed my outcomes for rolling a one, two, three, four, or five with all the different spinner colors and all the different heads or tails, and I'm just gonna finish up now by doing number six. So if I roll a six on the die, and if you're not too sure what I'm doing, I take a look again here. I'm going to just circle. I'm gonna roll a six potentially. I could land on green and I could toss and get heads. So I'm just circling. Those would be those three outcomes possible there. I could also get a six. I could also land on green, but toss the coin and get tails. So if it helps you, you could fill up your whole page by circling as you go each one of um, these possible outcomes. Because then it might help you to see. So again, what I could get a six. I could land on green on that spinner. And I could toss and get heads. I could get a six. I could again spin the green and get tails. Because for, for green, there's two possible outcomes. One could be the head, one could be the tail. I could get six again. And for this time blue, if I spin and land on blue, I could still toss the coin and get a heads. Or I could land on that six. I could spin and land on blue. And I could toss and land on tails. Six yellow heads. And if you're following along up here, six yellow with heads. And then six yellow with tails six and finally the last color on my spinner that I haven't listed yet is red with 
tossing and getting heads. And finally, six on the spinner, or six on the die, sorry, spinner would be red, and the coin could be tails. So here, I have listed all my outcomes for spinning the spinner, rolling the die, and tossing the coin. As we did in example one, we could go ahead and now count all of the possible outcomes. However, there is a more efficient way to know the number of possible outcomes. The die has six sides. The spinner has four equal sections. And the coin has two sides. So if we list six possible outcomes, four and two, and we multiply these together, six multiplied by four is 24. Multiply 24 by two, and we get a total possible number of outcomes, 48. So there's a total 48 number of outcomes. That's all for this lesson. Make sure you go back and review the steps in this video to help your understanding, then try some practice questions and problems on your own. You will be an expert in drawing probability tree diagrams in no time. If you haven't done so already, please like this lesson and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss any great new learning videos. Remember to share this video with your friends. I'm Eric. Thanks for learning with me today. Until next time, take care and keep learning.